All right, so we're gonna start out on the front of the car here. First things first, we got the beautiful 0304 Terminator Cobra front bumper. We just installed this, so if you're curious of how to install it or if you want a Cobra front bumper for your GT, I'll link the video above and the product in the description. We did get it off eBay and it was roughly $400 with shipping and painted. So that was actually a pretty good deal. These are not easy to find. This is actually a replica, it's not an original part, but it's very, very close. So uh, yeah, like I said, I'll link that video, but as you can see, it's a lot more aggressive. And um, Austin and I have to wire up the fog lights still. We did put the actual housings there, but we have to wire the lights up. We're gonna try and get the HIDs wired up and it'll look awesome, but I'm also gonna put that front Mach 1 chin spoiler on probably next week or next weekend. But yeah, I'm extremely pleased with the outcome of this and it changes the entire front end of the car. It looks a lot better in my opinion. So drop a comment below if you think so as well. And uh, we're gonna move on to the headlights. All right, so the actual headlamps, uh, nothing special. It's off, I think American Muscle, I got it years ago. They're smoked housings, which kind of complements the whole black look of the car with the wheels and the whole setup, the tents I have. So, and also inside, I'll turn these on in a second. We have 8K HID bulbs. I'll put the link in the description. Again, I got them years ago. Uh, they're kind of like an icy blue color. So they're very, very bright. The fog lights, I believe, are 8K as well. So this car can definitely see very well at night. I think I'm gonna keep that set up, but let's pop the hood next. All right, so let's dive into the engine bay. So as you can see here, I guess we'll start at the top and work our way down. This is a 78 millimeter BBK intake plenum. I'll put that in the description as well. So this allows a lot more airflow than the stock plenum or intake area for the car to breathe better. It's also paired with this JLT intake mentioned in our reveal video for the cams that the tuner recommended this kind of intake due to the bends in the pipe and it makes it a lot easier to actually tune the car. So there's some science behind that, which is pretty interesting. But yeah, this is sleeker and more appealing in my opinion than that, uh, I guess it was like an aluminum or chrome finish SR performance intake I had before. So this is a much better material and it just complements the engine bay a lot better than that one because it was getting kind of corroded and old. So that's it for the intake side of things. It's a stock Ford Performance PI intake plenum. Probably down the road I'll do like an Elderbrock Junior kind of setup maybe, but we'll see when that time comes. All right, so unfortunately you won't be able to see this part, but it is the stage two modular head shop camshafts we installed in this two valve here. So I'll link that video up above if you're interested and then as well as the reveal video, the first startup we did after the tuning was done a couple months ago. So this part actually increases the horsepower and torque. Most of these cars are pr pretty sluggish as it is, but the camshafts paired with the gears, I'll talk about that in a little bit, definitely wake this car up a lot. So that was definitely a really good modification we did to this car. Um, I got them custom degreed by Modular Head Shop as well, which I would highly recommend because you get the most power out of them. So that's pretty much it for the engine bay. Uh, I do have some Maxima Motorsport caster camber plates because the car is lowered. And when you drop the car, you know, over an inch and a half to two inches or any more than that, uh, you're going to want to get a set of these. Uh, I have, I'm on lowering springs. We'll talk about that in a minute. But the car, if it did not have those, it would have trouble being aligned at the alignment shop. So definitely go and get yourself a pair of those. Obviously there's a lot of a lot more caster camera plates out there, but these have not failed me at all. So I'd highly recommend that product. And speaking of Maxim Motorsports, I forgot one thing in the engine bay you won't be able to see, but it's the engine mounts. Those are also the same brand. So we ditched the polyurethane mounts. Uh, that actually gives you a slightly smoother ride because it has that polyurethane rubber material. But once you lower a car, that's it's game over. So. That's gonna sum it up right now, what's done to the engine bay. Now I will say, been doing some shopping and on three performance turbo kit is definitely something I'm very, very interested in. It's a great budget build and uh, a lot of people recommend that kit. So what you need to do, you need to upgrade the fuel system. Right now everything else is stock like the injectors and then you're gonna have to obviously run an intercooler and that comes with the kit and everything. So uh, a couple minor upgrades there but can produce obviously a lot of power easily, 400s of the wheels. So if you guys wanna see a turbo kit on this car, definitely uh, give us some love and support because I think it, it wants it and needs it. All right, so that pretty much wraps it up for the engine bay. Everything else is stock. Now we're gonna work our way around the car. All right, so let's move on to suspension. This car is currently lowered on Eibach Streetline lowering springs and I bought the um, 
you know, the shocks and struts with that kit as well. It's sitting about 1.7 inches dropped in the front and in the rear I think is 1.5. So it did drop it quite a bit from stock, but I definitely want to lower it a little more with the turbo kit. Uh, you will need coilovers in the front due to the tubular K-member and all the other components of the turbo kit to make the clearance correct. So if we do go with the turbo kit, this car is going to be even lower, which I'm hoping for a decent ride quality. Uh, I think it will be, it'll look a lot more aggressive. So I'm definitely leaning towards that. So everything else on the suspension is actually stock. Uh, I definitely need to, you know, upgrade some sway bars and maybe a bump steer kit or something like that. But the suspension needs a lot of work. That's uh, something I've been pushing off. But, you know, this summer we'll probably work on that. And let's dive down to the wheels and tire setup because I get this question a lot. All right, I'm going to have to read this one off. It's a mouthful. So these wheels and tire combination is a FR500 style black wheel. It's a 17 by 9 Nitto NT555 G2 ultra high performance tire. So it's meant for, you know, good weather, summer driving. Uh, very good tire. I love Nitto tires. Highly recommend them. The tire itself is a 275 by 40 R17. So it's a 17 inch wheel. And I love these wheels and tire combination. I really do. It's complements the car really well. It has a little bit of a aluminum lip, which complements, you know, the badges and anything else that isn't blacked out on the car. Uh, you got the American Muscle logo. You probably can't see that in the center wheel cap, but that's where I got them from. Got these a while ago. So that's the front setup. And then let's jump to the back. So these beefy boys in the back, I'll read you the description. They're a deep dish FR500 wheel, 17 by 10 and a half. And the tire is a Nitto NT555 G2 ultra high performance tire. But the specs on this is a 315 35R17. So it's, it's pretty thick. It grips pretty much all the time. I can chirp them obviously if I punch the gas, but they grip really well. Would highly recommend these tires to anyone, you know, running their car in the spring summer fall season obviously not winter it's not the best so that is the wheel and tire combo so another part you won't be able to see is the clutch i did this a couple years ago it's a exity stage two it, it's a little stiffer than the stock obviously but um it definitely grips and can handle the higher horsepower numbers this clutch is rated to i want to say like 420 foot pounds of torque and like that uh, i'll put the numbers on the screen here so obviously with this setup it's only pushing low 300s and with the torque and horsepower so i don't have any issues with that but if we do the turbo kit uh, i can easily surpass 400 horsepower so i'm going to want to upgrade that eventually but i'm not too worried about that obviously the transmission as well that is stock so car has about 108,000 miles we'll see how long that lasts before it blows up but i'm not going to beat on the car too much until i do upgrade that but let's move to the back of the car and we'll talk about what's done there all right so we made our way to the back of the car here I get a lot of questions and also compliments on these. These are the window louvers. Uh, you can get them on you know, American Muscle or LMR or any other website. But basically it's just a 3M adhesive tape that sticks to the back windshield and it gives us that aggressive and kind of retro style look back in the 70s. So I do like these a lot. Everyone asks if they fly off because they've heard horror stories on the highway. I've had these on for honestly probably four or five years now no issues at all so if you're looking to switch up the back end of your mustang uh, this is definitely a good way to do it. it it's different i don't see many mustangs out there with this setup so on the back side of the bumper here we got some chrome inserts uh, not really obviously a mod but it makes the, the back bumper pop a lot it complements the gt as well uh, i did throw some taillight tin on here just gives it that smoked out look to go with the rest of the car and as well as up here it's a third led brake light uh, I'll put a clip in here of me actually pressing the brakes so you can see it light up, but again complements the whole You know tinted out look of the car. So definitely a fan of that. So another part you won't be able to see is the gears uh, We had some 373 Ford performance gears installed in this car um, I think stock comes with three two sevens from the factory So this is quite a good upgrade this gear and the four tens are the most common upgrade for naturally aspirated Mustangs uh, for turbos you can probably knock that down to more of like a 355 gear so i'm hoping if i ever turbo this car which i plan on doing the 373 gears are a good you know pair well with that so drop a comment below if you have a turbo mustang two valve or if you know of anyone and what their gear setup is because i'm curious if the 373s will work with that turbo kit i think it will though also we had the torsen t2 limited slip differential put in at the same time obviously you're there so you might as well do it so that's going to put all the torque down to both tires and really give it as much power and torque as possible 
so I felt like that was a good upgrade to do as well. I'll link those parts in the description. And that pretty much wraps up the back end. I, we did upgrade the fuel pump, so I'll link the video from that. That was pretty simple. I think we upgraded to a 290 liter per hour fuel pump. The tuner told us the stock one was shot past a certain RPM when he was tuning the car, so recommended the Walbro fuel pump, so we did that, so the car is all good to go. Again, once you turbo a car or supercharge it, you're gonna wanna upgrade the whole fuel system, essentially. And let's talk about the exhaust now. All right, last thing to touch on before we go to the inside of the car is the exhaust, so can't really see a lot of it. I'll do my best to insert clips from the past, but we have BBK ceramic coated long tube headers on the car, which dramatically changes the exhaust tone. I personally like it, it's a more deep sounding exhaust versus the stock manifolds. They were rusted out and completely gone. So I think that was a great upgrade and there, there's really no rust on them since I opted to the ceramic coating option. So I'll link those in the description and the videos we did. I think it was last summer or two summers ago, but definitely a good upgrade. Uh, now the mid pipe is a catted BBK mid pipe, the X pipe. So I am running cats right now. I do have the off-road mid pipe. Um, I plan on getting that welded just in case I want to swap it. That's definitely a lot raspier. So if you're into that loud, really loud raspy, you know, tone of the Mustang, that's for you. This one is definitely a lot more toned down. So that's the catted mid pipe. And um, on the back of the car, we got a Flowmaster Thunderback catback exhaust. Now those mufflers are pretty big, so they do muffle the sound quite a bit. Obviously that's what they're supposed to do. But the car sounds pretty good at mid throttle to full throttle and at idle it's pretty tamed. So I kind of do want to open it up a little bit, make it breathe better, especially with the cams now. You can feel it chop and hear a chop inside the car, but you can barely hear it out the back end. So drop a comment below what exhaust combos you guys have or want to see. I've heard a lot of good things about the SLP Loudmouth 2. The Loudmouth 1 is pretty much just a straight pipe, so it's extremely loud. I don't want to spend 500 something dollars when I can just cut the mufflers off and weld it. I've heard Borla Attacks or the Stingers are a good option, but those are nearing, you know, 900 to thousand dollars so i'm not trying to drop that much money so drop a comment what exhaust you guys like or have or want to see and uh we'll take that in consideration but let's jump in the car now so inside the car really the only thing i changed is the shifter so i have a hirsch short throw shifter which is amazing over the stock shifter now i'll do a quick demonstration that's first second third fourth fifth the stock one, you literally, your knuckles are almost hitting the radio, that's how far it goes. And then second gear, you're dropping it to like where you would put a water bottle. So the Hirsch throw throw shifter not only allows you to bend gears faster, but it's a much shorter throw, which I do really enjoy. That's a, you know, a simple modification I would definitely recommend people doing with these cars since the throw is so long. Uh, it's a much more accurate shift. That's pretty much it for the interior. I mean, I have a Pioneer head unit, but it's not a mod, obviously. Uh, so yeah, now we're gonna start the car up and let you hear the exhaust.
Alright guys, so that's going to wrap up today's video of the new Edge 2 valve we got here. Uh, pretty short and sweet, just going over what's done to the car. If you guys have any questions, drop a comment below. Let us know what you want to see next. I'm definitely leaning towards the turbo kit, and I kind of want to save up for that. All said and done, it's going to be around 32, 3500 bucks. So definitely more of a budget turbo build from a company. Obviously, you can piece it out yourself, build it, but we're just going to go with the on three kit most likely. Uh, anything else, like I said, suspension or exhaust, comment down below what you guys want to see. But uh, until then, we're out.